You're going to be my assistant in this campaign. Friendships come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, or sometimes even species. You can line up your own staff. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cartoon best friends on TV. Don't worry, TJ, we're with you, man. Yeah, no matter what happens, we're all in this together. Hey, what are you kids doing there? For this list, we're focusing on those memorable TV cartoon friendships. These dynamic duos could have been created for another medium, but they must have had a significant TV presence as well. <laughs> also, we didn't include best buds who are family members. You guys make a great team. Well, a brother is a brother, but I couldn't have asked for a better one than Ferb. You know what I mean? Oh, man, I can smell the peanut butter. Well, that was impressive. Number 10, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny, South Park. Hit it, hit it, how's it going, guys? What the hell are you so happy about, fat ass? Oh, nothing. No big deal, really. What's no big deal? Well, guys, it seems that I am the first one of us to reach manhood after all. Best friends don't always act like it. Just look at South Park's Stan Marsh, Kyle Broflovsky, Eric Cartman, and Kenny McCormick. So, dude, did Cartman's idea work? No. I tried getting my cousin lost in the woods, but a stupid bear brought him home. Cartman's a total jerk, and hanging out with him is usually as much about arguing and dissing each other as it is about playing. Hey, look! Some other kids are doing the same thing we are. <laughs> but that's the way friends are in life. Besides, it's when they're not getting along that they're at their most entertaining. This isn't about PSP, Calf. This is about my friend and his wishes. And Kenny said he didn't want to live like this. He did not. Did so. Did not. Fine. We'll see about this, you freaking Jew. Number nine, Beavis and Butthead. Do you guys want to have sex? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, if it's not too much trouble, you know. Beavis and Butthead are another duo that doesn't always act like best buds. We mean there's the slapping, the insults, the general abuse. Dude, you stink. Hit the shower. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's all part of being a teenaged boy, but Beavis and Butthead, especially Butthead, take it to an extreme. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> They may be dumb slackers with no readily apparent social skills and some anger issues, but if they didn't have each other, who else would they hang out with? <laughs> hey, we want our money back, butthole. <laughs> you snuck in! Uh, oh yeah. Number eight, Snoopy and Woodstock, the Peanuts franchise. <laughs> One's a dog with an overly vivid imagination, the other's a bird named after a 1960s countercultural landmark. <laughs> Together, they fight, dance, hug, argue, and generally look out for each other. Woodstock gives Snoopy someone to look after, without burdening him with too much responsibility. And Snoopy gives Woodstock a sense of security and someone he can be himself with. Number seven, Ash and Pikachu, Pokemon. Its name is Pikachu. Oh, it's so cute, it's the best of all. You'll see. Oh, hi, Pikachu! Pika. Ash and Pikachu's relationship started out as one of a master and pet, as the young Ash was given Pikachu as a starter Pokémon. With Pikachu at my side, I'll get all the Pokémon in the world! But the relationship quickly became one of friends, as an intense bond of love and companionship developed over the course of their many adventures. My powers are too great. No trainer can conquer me. Then you won't mind proving it in a real match! Is that a challenge? You bet it is! The two would do anything for each other, and pretty much have. Pikachu! <laughs> Number six, Bart and Milhouse, The Simpsons. Wow, you really got it made now, Milhouse. This is living. Is it, Bart? Is it really? Being best friends with Bart Simpson automatically means trouble. 
Faithful Millhouse, you'll spend the long, hot days by my side, won't you? Oh, I think I lost my glasses in your pool. But Bart's fondness for Millhouse sometimes takes a backseat to his need for mischief. Most best friends don't get their best buds placed on the FBI's most wanted list. Remember I got Millhouse's picture on America's Most Wanted? There he is, on the monkey bars. Try to take him alive. No, no, not again! Despite this, nerdy Millhouse stays friends with his bad boy best bud. Bart couldn't care less that Millhouse is a total nerd. Say, cool dude, can I play too? Uh, uh, it's only a one-player game. Then how come it says second-player score? Mom, Bart's swearing! Besides, he needs a good follower. And with Millhouse, that job is taken. There you go. One soul. Pleasure doing business with you. Number five, Fry and Bender, Futurama. Hey, uh, Bender, what are we doing in this bad neighborhood? Shut up, Square. They say opposites attract, and that's never been more true than on TV. I must have been really acting like a jerk. Yeah, but everybody's a jerk. You, me, this jerk. Futurama's Fry and Bender are a prime example of that. Fry is basically a gullible, good-natured, not-too-smart lug. And human. Bender is a sociopathic robot who's a braggart and a pathological liar to boot. And a bit too fond of the alcohol. I need plenty of wholesome, nutritious alcohol. Ooh. The chemical energy keeps my fuel cells charged. So what are the cigars for? They make me look cool. But if Bender is in the relationship mostly out of convenience, it's okay. Fry's got enough genuine affection for both of them. Bender, I missed you so much! Hey, wait, did you haunt me? Number four, Finn and Jake, Adventure Time. Hey, so I want you all to meet Finn and Jake. They aren't completely lame. What up? One of the great things about Adventure Time is that the viewer has to fill in a lot of blanks in terms of plot and backstory. Do you know what Ice King means? Yeah, I know what Ice King means. A big nerd. <laughs> oh, holy cow. But that's not the case with the friendship between Jake the dog and Finn the human. <gasps> oh, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, baby, 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 yeah, baby, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. The real feelings that these two bros have for each other are crystal clear. Whether fighting the Ice King, rescuing princesses, or just chillin'. I'm kinda tired from doing vampire stuff all day. We're just gonna chill. You always know there's no place else they'd rather be than with each other. Well, we're going back home. Peace. Number three, SpongeBob and Patrick, SpongeBob SquarePants. Good morning, Krusty Crew! What would you like to order, Patrick? One Krabby Patty, please. Birds of a feather flock together, so it's a good thing that the two least intelligent denizens of Bikini Bottom were able to find each other. Don't worry, buddy. You're doing fine. I won't let you blow this. There may not be a lot of brains between SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Starr, but that doesn't keep them from having fun. They should call you SpongeBob Fancy Pants! Whether laughing maniacally, screaming in terror, playing at sports, or throwing a luau, SpongeBob and Patrick know how to have an inanely good time. Patrick, you're my best friend in the whole neighborhood. Number two, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo, the Scooby-Doo franchise. Did you get a look at his face? Yeah, he'd make a fortune renting himself out to Halloween parties. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about Timmy and Lassie. When it comes to a boy and his dog, nothing beats Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Uh, no sense letting good food go to waste, huh, Scoob? <laughs> sure, Shaggy's technically a bit old to be called a boy, but you sure wouldn't call him a man, would you? What's wrong with Scooby? Like, he's still mad at me because I went to the prom with Velma instead of watching the Vincent Van Gogh marathon with him. These two chow hounds like nothing more than hanging out and trying to satisfy their never-ending case of the munchies. Don't forget to chew. And breathe. <laughs> like, thanks, Mom and Dad. But these two proponents of a stoner lifestyle do get their exercise by running from any of the million things that scare them witless. But they're always fleeing together. All right, Scooby-Doo. You can come with us. Ooh. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. 
Mac, I know you're worried, but listen, with me living here, Mom will be happy, Terrence will leave you alone, and you can visit me every day. It sounds way too dangerous, Dobby. What else can we do? Wait for it to come and get us? I think he wants me to put the hurt on him. I think he wants you to put the hurt on him. You think he wants me to put the hurt on him? Yes, I do. Ah! Ah! We never should have brought the henchmen. We're going to be the only ones there with henchmen. I'm going to have to kill them. Pull over if you see a good place to dump their bodies. I can't take this. You're the best friends a guy could ever have. Thanks, Teej. Actually, it was a relatively entertaining recess. <laughs> Number one. Did you see what I saw? Yes, but I don't believe it. Maybe Fred likes Barney's poetry after all. Fred and Barney, the Flintstones. They may share Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton's camaraderie, but Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble's friendship is even deeper. Out, out, out! Hey, uh, what are you trying to say, Fred? <laughs> and stay out! Even more than their best bud wives, Wilma and Betty, Fred and Barney are incomplete without each other. Morning, Barney. Beautiful day, huh, pal? Naturally, it's a working day. Fred's blustery blather and harebrained schemes need Barney's easygoing chuckle and doubtful but game attitude. We form a corporation. Yeah, but I will be the president, and I'll make you vice president in charge of production. They're the animated blueprint for countless other best buds that never left their childhood behind them. Fred! Barney! You're all cute! Where are you going? No time to explain now, Wilma. We'll tell you all about it when we get home. Do you agree with our choices? Yes! What other animated best buds should we have added to this list? What are you, 65? Excuse me, sir, can I have a raise? Come on! I'm telling you, dude! Ham boning! For more enthralling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Good night, bud. Good night, Red. Good night, Paulette. Good night, Cassidy. Butters, I'm going to kill you over and over again.